in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to simulate rainfall stochastically. Sometimes in your model, in your models that you build, you might not have um, a time series of historic record of rainfall and therefore have to generate it uh, synthetically with uncertainty. So I'll show you how to do a simple one of these kind of models in GoldSim. In the following tutorial, we'll use a more um, robust method, but this is a quite simple method that only requires 10 or 12 elements. The first thing I want to do is use a data element to um, provide uh, to the model what the probability of a, a storm beginning is, and I'll call this wet prob. So the probability of today being wet. And so this is um, going to be a percent. And for now, I'll just call this 20%. So on any given day in the model, and by the way, this model is running for 100 days on a one day time step. So on, an, on any given day, it could be wet. And there's a 20% chance of that happening. And so now I want to generate an event that causes the be, uh, beginning of a storm. And I'm going to do that with what's called a random choice element. And this is really handy because it allows you to, on every day, evaluate a probability and generate a triggered outcome based on that probability, which is exactly what we need to do. So I'll call this element storm. And it generates a begin storm event based on probability. Okay, and our probability is the element we just created called wet prob. So the probability, if that, if, if based on that probability, um, then we'll have a given outcome called begin or begin of the storm. We're not going to use the other output, so I'll just call this do nothing. Nothing will happen. Um, because we're not even linking to that output. But one thing we need to do with this element is make sure that we trigger it every time step. So I'm going in here to the trigger, add, and on change, um, e day, we'll say. That's the elapsed day of the simulation. So every day we're going to reevaluate this probability and determine whether we have a begin event occur. Okay, so the output on this element is the begin event that we're interested in. And that's an event generated 20% uh, of the time, right, every day. OK, the next thing we'll, we want to do is define the length of the storm. So we're going to do that with an average length of storm, another uh, constant called wet length this time. Length in days of the storm of, I should say, an average storm. And that's in units of days, and we'll say it's three days long um, on average. OK, and we're going to use um, what's called an, an event delay to describe the end of a storm. So I'll go over here to event delay, and I'll put that right underneath the, uh, the storm uh, event generator, or storm begin. So this, describe, or this uh, creates an event at the end of a storm. And the, this element is triggered when the storm begins. And then we have to just delay by a length of the storm to end it. So to trigger this one, we simply refer to the beginning of the storm. And that's an event type. So we say storm.begin uh, right there. So that's when we trigger the, uh, the end of the storm is based on the beginning of the storm. And by the way, we should call this uh, end storm. And then what we want to do is define the delay time, and that is the, the length of the storm event itself. And, that, and then the output of this element is going to be the event that triggers the end of the storm. Um, this is going to give us uh, a constant length, so every single storm will have the same exact length of three days. We don't want that. We want some uncertainty in here. We want it to vary between uh, one and, let's say, six days or so. 
to do that, the easiest way is to just provide um, a mean and a standard deviation. But we could put in here another stochastic that defines that a little more accurately um, to given a uh, set number of days that we want to define. But for now, we'll just put in a mean and standard deviation. We already know the mean. That's the wet length. What I'm going to do here is a little bit arbitrary, but quite simple to, to use. I'm just going to refer again to the wet length. For the, for the standard deviation, and then just divide it by five, because I don't want the standard deviation to be very high. Um, I don't want it to vary too much away from three days. And also keep in mind that because this is a delay element and we have one day basic time steps, um, if, if the value is not an integer, it will, um, it will delay it until the next rounded up um, integer amount of time. Okay, so that's the beginning and the end of the storm that we've already defined. Now we want to add what's called a status element, and this will tell us whether or not we have a wet day or a dry day. So it's the status of today. So we'll call this wet. And it's true if today is wet, false if today is dry. To trigger it to be true or to be wet, we need to define the first trigger here. So we go to this trigger, and to define it as true, we simply uh, use the storm begin event, storm dot begin. And then um, we also need to make sure that we don't try to trigger a beginning of a storm if it's already raining. Okay, so we need to go down here into the more and check this and say, if it's not wet, okay, whoops, I just accidentally unchecked it, not uh, wet. All right, so. This tells us that um, the only way to begin a storm is if it's currently dry. We'll go ahead and close that. And now we need to trigger to be dry. To trigger it to be dry means this, the storm needs to be over. So I'll add another event here that's called end storm. But then also we don't need to trigger an end of storm if it's already dry. We need to make sure that it's currently wet in order to do this. So I'll just type in wet here. We need to be, today needs to be wet in order for that to work for us to end the storm. All right, with that done, the next step here is to generate the magnitude of the storm event in, uh, in terms of millimeters per day. So right now, this is just telling us when the storms are occurring. In fact, we could go ahead and run this model and see what it looks like. So I'll run it and plot the wet versus dry time. Oh, and we're running multiple realizations here, by the way. So let me just run it for a single realization. Going back to the simulation settings. Okay, run it for a single simulation, and now we can see um, the wet versus dry periods during this 100-day period. If you want to have less storms occur, then just change your probability of, of wet down to, let's say, 10%. And run the model again. And now you can see there are fewer storms occurring. If you want more variability in the length of the storm, simply increase your standard deviation of the length. So we'll just divide it by two. And run this again. Now you can see some storms are quite a bit longer than other ones. So that's the kind of flexibility that you have in generating your synthetic storms or storm durations. The next step is the magnitude. So let's go ahead and create another data element and let's call this storm depth. And this is actually an average, average uh, storm. It's actually a storm intensity, we should say intensity. So I shouldn't, that's a little bit confusing. Storm intensity, and we should probably put average on there somehow. So that's um, made known, made obvious. And let's just say we have a, a 10 millimeter per day average storm intensity. And now, we use a stochastic element. And a stochastic is just a way of generating a random number, but we want to base it on a probability distribution. And we want to give it the same units of millimeters per day, and we're going to call this, uh, uh, we'll call it storm intensity, as opposed to the average, right, because we're sampling a random number. And let's go ahead and use the gamma distribution here. Uh, we can refer, obviously, to the storm intensity average. And then the question is, what do we use for the standard deviation? And let's, for now, because we don't have a lot of information, let's just say it's the same as the, as the, as the mean. 
And so this is the range of possibility that we're looking at in this probability distribution here of what our um, storm intensity could be on any given day. We could also look at this in a cumulative distribution plot to see that um, as you get up and, and start approaching 80 millimeters per day, you can see it's a pretty uh, um, um, improbable. And you can see just how probable it is by um, going down here <coughs> to the calculator and typing something like 70 millimeters per day. And you can see that um, it would be a very small chance of um, getting a value that's above 70 millimeters per day. So you kind of want to look at this and see, does that make sense for your area? And then we click OK there. Um, the next thing we need to do is make sure that we're resampling this. And we want to resample it um, every day because this is a one day time step in this model. So I'm going to go resample here and say on changed E day. The other thing we want to do is we probably want to put in a little bit of autocorrelation, which allows us to sample a value that is somewhat similar to the previous sample, um, the previous day's sample, uh, because that kind of makes more sense in time. You know, if yesterday it was raining very hard, it's likely, or a little bit more likely that tomorrow will also. It's not totally random from day to day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit more here and then select autocorrelation and say uh, 0 0.7, let's say. You can, this can be adjusted and I'll show you the difference. Um, now that the storm intensity is, is um, completed, we want to create now a selector element that allows us to define the rain if it's wet. Okay, so this ties everything together. We're going to call this uh, precipitation and give it the same units millimeters per day and then all we, all we need to do here is say is it wet if it is then we apply the rain uh, storm intensity storm intensity and if it's not wet then it's zero and that should be all we need to do so I'm going now to add a time history chart here I'll put it right there and I'll call this uh, precipitation history and I'll add that precip in there and run the model and look at the chart and here are the storm events over time and then what we can do is uh, go back to the simulation settings and run this for 100 realizations and go ahead and try it again and now what we can do is we can see the probabilities through time of all of our rain events and then we can see one at a time and we can see a statistic the average over time or we can just walk through realizations one at a time and evaluate them if you feel like the, there are too many rain events occurring then again that has to do with the um, the probability at any given time of a rain occurring so wet prob you probably want to adjust that also you might say well I want some seasonality here you know it's very rare that we have rain events during one part of the season but very common to have them in other parts well to do that you simply just need to um, add a vector of these values here and that they for you know where you assign a value for each month let's say so there are a lot of things you can do to this model but basically we have now running a stochastic simulator of, um, of rainfall